Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and to what I believe is going to be the last video in this uh, restoration of a Rob Cherrywood pipe. So when last we saw the stem, I had sanded it to uh, 220 and had soaked it in mineral oil. Uh, I allowed that to sit uh, actually for a few evenings because uh, I just didn't get back to it. Wiped off the mineral oil, resanded it at 220, and then sanded it at uh, 320, 400, and 600. And this is the the result after buffing with uh, both Triple E and White Diamond. And there's some dust on this because I've got a lot of dust here on the the uh, the, the cloth that I'm using. But uh, by and large, it's 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 it came out very nice. Uh, it's not mirror polish shiny and and I'll be honest with you I don't really like mirror pine polish shiny on my stems because you know I like to repair pipes I like to fix pipes that are not smokable I don't really like to maintain pipes that are smokable my own pipes uh, and if you if you get this shiny to the point where it's you know mirror polish you very quickly start to see oxidation occurring down around the, the bite zone here, and it's just more work. So I like a semi-matte finish. I mean, you can see it's 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 shiny, but it's not uh, it's not a mirror polish. If I wanted to do the mirror polish, I would have proceeded up to uh, probably 1,200 grit sandpaper before uh, before uh, going to the buffing wheel, and then I would finish it off with some micro mesh pads before waxing. Uh, this has not been waxed yet. So, anyway, the, the stem is essentially complete, uh, so we're going to set that, except for waxing, so we're going to set that aside. And the bowl and, and uh, shank here are thoroughly cleaned inside and out, you saw that last time around. Uh, so, what we're going to do is, I've got a decision to make about the, the shank, and I'm going to take that off now. The bowl is essentially done until we wax it, so I'm going to set that aside as well. The shank uh, has this one spot here, and I'll see if I can get this focused for you. There's this one spot where it appears that the bark has been crushed a little bit. And I would like to prevent that, well first off I'd like to prevent it from catching on the buffing wheel uh, and, and tearing the bark off. But secondly I'd like to prevent it from you know, further breaking off and, and, and you know, falling apart. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small drop or two of uh, super glue on that and spread it around just to allow it to sink into the areas that are broken and just protect that surface. So it will be a semi-visible patch. Um, when it's on the pipe, it is, let's see, yeah, it's on the bottom so it's not terribly prominent. And I just think it's going to allow, because it would be terrible if that started to split and wrap around the top. Uh, I think it'll just allow the pipe to be looking good for a much longer period of time. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to address this cork. So we've got to get this old cork out. And let's see. can't see exactly how far down it goes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I think, this little dental pick and just get in there and try to remove as much of this as I can. You can see it's, it's actually coming out quite easy. Um, there we go. Yeah, big pieces. So it's almost like the... Well, it's, it's definitely true that the cork is, has degraded a bit. Uh, it's, it's much more fragile than I would expect it to be. But it also seems like the glue just gave way on this. And I don't know... Well, it didn't all give way, apparently. I don't know what we're going to find in terms of whether there's a ledge underneath this or if it's just a straight tube that, you know, it stops at some point. We'll, we'll get this all figured out in a second as soon as I get the remainder of the cork out. Take a closer look at this. Okay, so that is mostly out. There's just a tiny bit that is trapped up along this wall. And I think for that I'm going to use 
a different tool, which is my little all-purpose reaming knife. I call it a reaming knife, but I use it for a lot of things. And we'll just get in there and scrape that wall. That seems to have done the trick. I really want to make sure that this is all out, and I want to prep that surface because I'm going to be gluing a cork into it. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit of sandpaper in there and, and just sand it fully clean, but you can see that that is for the most part out. So let me do that, and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start to install the cork. Okay, so I got that uh, pretty well cleaned out just using some 220 grit sandpaper on the inside. Um, and that's roughed up the surface a bit as well, but you know I can feel with the knife that there's there's no Bumps in it. It's just the the roughness from the sandpaper, which is exactly what I want in order to have the glue grip to it <clears throat> now I want to <coughs> Excuse me. I want to thank a number of people because quite a few people got in touch with me after the first video to um, to help out in terms of determining what this stuff that was in the shank actually was. Um, you know, I originally thought that it was a, you know, decaying wood or, or a pith from the stem or something like that. Um, and a few people commented that they thought the same. Uh, however, I did get several um, comments, emails, private messages from people, not to mention uh, video responses. And I'm going to highlight the ones that uh, I, I uh, found very helpful, and I please, if I forgot yours, it's just because there were so many, and I didn't mean to intentionally slight you. Um, but I, I appreciate all the, uh, the the comments and the help with this. So uh, Danny Shore, who I mentioned in the first video, um, he put up a video where he was working on a couple of different pipes, and he showed uh, a ROP that um, had a plastic insert, and he had commented that they had either plastic or cork inserts. And uh, he also in this video gave a really great tip on how to uh, repair the stem, the, the uh, threads on the shank here if, if needed. Fortunately, mine are in really good shape, but uh, it's definitely something worth keeping in mind. So I'll link to that video below, and, and thank you, Danny, for the, uh, the information on this. Uh, also, Fireman Piper made a, a VR to that first video where he showed uh, his ROP and uh, gave pretty convincing evidence based on how it, it felt and sounded as he was inserting the stem uh, that it was in fact a, a cork uh, sleeve that was in there and uh, that makes sense to me and I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, also I was contacted by a new friend of mine, uh, Pat, who runs the uh, Second Light Pipes blog and uh, I say new friend because I've only recently, as you know, gotten into to writing a blog, and, and Pat was one of the first people to uh, to, to link up with me, and I, I really enjoy his blog. He um, he he does pipe restoration. He, he has some very interesting posts on his blog, and also he sells the, his restored pipes through the blog. Uh, and there's some, from what I've seen, very very nice pipes at, at very reasonable prices. So I'm going to link below uh, to a particular post that he made on Rob pipes that is that is very interesting. Uh, I hope you go check that out and, and take a look at his uh, site because he's, like I said, he's got some really good deals on restored pipes. Uh, but what Pat said was that uh, it was a plastic sleeve that was put in the in the shank in later pipes. So by later, he said it was somewhere in the in the 60s or 70s when they converted to the plastic sleeve. Uh, so that helps a lot because you know this is clearly not plastic. So we know that this pipe was probably made prior to. Uh, to sometime in the 60s or 70s, so that at least gives us some dating information. And Pat suggested uh, some 1 16th inch uh, adhesive shelf liner to, to use, and that, that's a, a cork adhesive shelf liner. And that's really a fantastic idea because then you don't have to worry about the glue or anything and it'll just fit in there, and he said he's had a lot of success with that. He even kindly offered to, uh, to send me some if I had trouble sourcing it. Uh, and I, I do appreciate that. So what I do have um, that I think is going to be quite a reasonable uh, solution to this problem is this uh, cork sheeting that is actually made for repairing um, musical instruments like clarinets or saxophones uh, that have, uh, I think saxophones, clarinets, oboes, things like that, certainly the woodwinds, 
have uh, joints that are uh, held in place by a compressed cork sleeve, uh, very similar to what we've talked about before with the calabash pipes and how the cap fits into the gourd. And this is the kind of cork that is used for that. It is 1 16th inch thick, and as you can see, I'll see if I can focus a bit better, but this is a very fine grade of cork. It's, it's uh, you know, it's compressed sheet cork, but it's, it's very uh, fine granules in here. So I'm hoping that this is going to stand up well to being bent into a, uh, a tube when we put it in. So how are we going to put a tube in here and glue it to the walls evenly and have the stem fit well. Well, what we need is some sort of a mandrel that we can wrap the cork around so that it slides in there and exerts pressure uh, against the uh, the tube. And we'd like it to do that in a way that uh, is consistent with the diameter of the stem, uh, the, the tenon rather. And I could turn a mandrel out of Delrin or wood or something like that, but we've got a mandrel. <laughs> The, the tenon of the pipe actually is the perfect thing to put in there because it'll allow us to uh, to basically size the, the, the cork insert to the, uh, to the pipe, to the tenon itself. So, uh, the, as you can see, the tenon goes in and is still quite a bit loose, which is what we expect. The, I've measured, using a, a caliper, I've measured the depth of this. There is a slight ridge down at the bottom here. It's not, it's not a you know, really large ledge or anything, but it's enough to stop the cork from pushing further in. And that uh, is exactly 510 thousandths of an inch in, so a little bit over a half inch. Um, this is is larger than that by uh, by a fair amount, uh, maybe about a, a eighth of an inch almost. So it's not intended that this actually be completely surrounded by cork. There'll be about an eighth inch here at the end that's going to stick out. And I can figure out the circumference of this based on the diameter of the tenon. So the tenon diameter is uh, 265 thousandths. So using simple circumference calculation, I come up with 833 thousandths. So you know, basically 0.83 inch uh, by about a half inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that out and, and cut a piece from the, the cork sheet. And I'm going to wrap it around the tenon. I'm going to apply glue. And what I'm going to use for this is, is tight bond wood glue. This stuff uh, has worked very well in these situations for me in the past. I've, I've, I've not actually used cork on a pipe before, but I use it a lot like for soft jaws on a, on a vise. Uh, you know, I've lined woodworking vices with cork and, and the tight bond is perfectly adequate. Uh, fixative for that. So I will cut the sheet, I'll measure it, cut it, and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to actually do the insertion into the shank. Well after playing with this for a bit I've, I've decided to take a different approach because uh, it turns out when I do cut a piece that you know pretty well fits around the tenon it is actually much too large to fit into the shank, and that's because the cork compresses as the tenon goes in. So, not the best idea. I'm going to put the stem away. So I've cut a piece that's actually a bit smaller than what I had originally predicted, and I was able to fit this in quite nicely into the, into the shank. And I'm not going to show you that because once it was in there, I had a great deal of difficulty getting it back out. You can see I actually broke the cork here but I made it a bit large. That needs to be cut away anyway, so that's not going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the glue. We're going to fit this in without um, anything in the center. Whoops, I just applied the glue prematurely. <laughs> that's okay. We'll fit this in and then we will um, uh, just take a, uh, a, a small dowel and, and rub around the inside of it to get it tightly fitting against the walls. So I've got the, the tight bond glue here and uh, actually since I've already dunked it I might as well just take the approach of dunking it. Let's make sure that we've got a liberal coat on there. I'm using a bamboo skewer here, not for any reason, it's just what I had handy. Toothpick would work or 
you know, really just about anything, a scrap of wood. I don't want there to be so much glue on this that it squishes out all over the inside of the shank, so I'm just trying to saturate the cork and then remove as much of it as I can. Still leaving a layer on there. That ought to be good. Okay. Get the glue off my fingers here. And let's see what we can do. And that's seated. Okay, so now I'm going to take the other end of this bamboo skewer and I'm just going to go ahead and try to even out the inside here, just applying pressure and as you can see the, the cork has cracked in a few spots, I mean it's making it a somewhat square shape, but that's okay the, the pressure of the tenon is going to easily even that out and I'm just again sort of applying that trying to evenly apply pressure all the way around the inside just to get this smoothed out and that should do it yeah I think that actually looks pretty good um, keep in mind there's a fair amount here that's going to be cut away uh, and that's where these cracks are most obvious when, when I'm down there and I run my the, this um, piece of bamboo around I, I don't feel any like hard edges or anything it, it feels very smooth so I think we're going to just leave that as is to, uh, to set for a while. And once, well actually while that's, while we're waiting for that to set, there's one other thing we can do and that's um, to do this little bit of hatching that I wanted to do with super glue. So I just got a piece of card here and um, for my tube of super glue. Okay, I will bring you back once I find my super glue. Okay, the super glue was hiding, but I found it. Um, and I'm going to just put a couple of drops here on this card. And we will use that, and actually we'll go ahead and use the pointy end of the skewer again. And again, I'm trying to, you know, I don't want to do too much here, I don't want to, you know, create a blob, but I just want to kind of saturate that flaw. Or, or that crush mark, I guess you could say. Sorry, I'm out of shot there. Yeah, I think that's that's got it. And you know that that may be a bit shiny once it sets, but once the whole thing is waxed, you will not be able to to really see that unless you're looking for it. And you already know it's there. So we'll set that aside. Give that a good hour or two for the tight bond to set up and at that point we will be ready to uh, begin reassembly and the final waxing so I'll bring you back very soon okay folks so we've given the, the glue some time to set and as you can see that um, the little patch that I did with the super glue is, is a bit shiny but not too bad <clears throat> what I'll probably do is when I have it over the, the buffer I'll hit that with a little bit of white diamond, just very lightly, uh, really just to kind of make that into a matte surface, and, and then I'll put the wax over top of it, so it shouldn't, shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, the glue is set in here, and the really the only thing we have left to do is to, to trim this off, and I want to bevel the edge of this a little bit just to help the stem uh, slip in there. So to, to trim it off, couldn't be simpler. I mean, cork is very easy to cut. So I'm just going to use a razor blade and I'm going to try to keep this as parallel as possible to the stem and just sort of slowly slice through it. Okay. 
And there we go, that was relatively clean. Just want to make sure that it's all below the surface. So I'll just come along here and trim a little bit more off. Yeah. The next stage will take care of the rest of that. You can see that is relatively round, uh, which is what we were hoping for. Now, again, I want to I want to bevel this because I don't want the the stem to be forcing into uh, and catching on the edge of that. So, what we will do is I have a, another dowel here that's uh, got a bevel on it that I made for something else a while back, and I've just got a little bit of. 220 grit sandpaper that I'm going to wrap around that. Uh, actually, I'm going to wrap it like this so that there's a sort of a cone. And let's see if we can, I eh, may have to extend that a little bit more and wrap it off the dowel. I really want the end of that to get in there. There we go, that'll work. And now turning this should be able to sand that out and hopefully bevel it. Let's see how that's doing. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit chewed up. Not exactly what I was hoping for. Not too bad though. So I'll probably do a bit more hand work on this just uh, maybe just using the sandpaper. You know, the problem with, with this kind of pressed cork is that it is in pieces, you know, kind of, I, I assume, glued together. I don't actually know how, yeah, it must be some sort of, of adhesive is used to, to have those pieces pressed together. And, of course, if there's a piece on the edge, it's going to potentially chip off. And, you know, we got a little bit of that here, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. It'll do the job just fine. Okay, so I'll probably fuss with that a little bit more uh, just to get it the way I want it. And the next step then, we might as well fit everything together. So what I'm going to do is, after I get everything together, is uh, go ahead and retort the pipe. And then I will wax it. And I do it in that order just in case any... There's the moment of truce for this. You see it's a nice tight fit. Perfect. There we go. Very nice. That's that's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, we will uh, we'll retort this, and, and I do it in that order because in case any alcohol were to get out here or anything, it would it would affect the wax coating. So, just to avoid that, we retort it before we wax it. Uh, so I will do that. Uh, I'll direct you to my retort video in case you uh, you haven't seen that and you want to know more about retorting. Uh, and uh, the buffing, I'm, I'm not going to set the camera up over there. If you see my recent tamper video, you'll see basically the, the steps that I'm using. Now, I'm not going to use the Tripoli on this because I don't want to, you know, really abrade the surface of this bark at all. But I will do a little bit of white diamond just to shine it up. Uh, and, and again, uh, take some of the shine off of this, uh, this super glue. And then we'll put on the uh, Carnuba wax over the whole thing, and she will be ready to smoke. So I will bring you back shortly for the final product. Well, friends, we have a fully restored Rupp Cherrywood pipe that is ready to be smoked. So the, uh, the finish turned out quite nice on this. As you can see, that bark has this really beautiful, I mean, the technical term in the woodworking world is chatoyance, uh, but just the way the light plays across the, the grain and the bark is really something special. Um, turned out really very nicely. That uh, patch in the bottom where we reinforced it a bit, it is noticeable, but really no more noticeable than some of the natural defects in the wood. And uh, I, I think it's fine. I'd, I'd rather be confident that this is going to last for, for years to come rather than have to worry about it. So um, <clears throat> overall, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Um, the retort pulled out some additional stuff, as retorts always do. Uh, but it's uh, it's very clean now and ready to smoke. The stem turned out nicely. That Rupp logo is just beautiful. All the tooth chatter's out and uh, all the oxidation is gone. And the cork liner is 
working out just fine, doing a great job holding the stem, and we'll probably continue to do that for some time to come. Of course, if it starts to break down, I know how to replace it, so I'm not too worried about that. <clears throat> so, very, very happy with the, uh, the stem. You know, I wanted to say something about this cork insert and, and the... Um, the reasons for that, and I don't know. Uh, there's unfortunately very little documentation from ROP on their pipes or, you know, why they did things. But my guess is there was a concern with this being cherry and with it being a basically a cherry twig that the wood would be rather unstable. And therefore, with heat and humidity, you're going to expect this to swell and shrink quite a bit. So using some cork in there really uh, ensures that despite that movement of the wood, you're still going to have a nice secure fit of the um, of, of the stem, and when they switch to a plastic sleeve, I think the, the logic was the same because the plastic is not going to expand and contract, at least not at the same rate that the wood would would would, uh, and that would allow you to continue to have a nice fit with your stem. So that's the uh, logic behind it. It's a nice sitter. I'm very happy with this, and I cannot wait to smoke it. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. Um, I sure have enjoyed restoring this, uh, this beautiful old pipe and getting it ready to go back into service. If you have enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Please uh, feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think you would have done something differently because I, I, I'm always happy to, uh, to learn new approaches to these things. If you're a subscriber, I thank you for that. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to find out about future videos just like this, uh, please hit the subscribe button and you'll get notified when, uh, when I start a new series. So with that, I will draw this to a close. Thank you again all for watching, and until next time, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.